I am Ozan. Uh, I'm architect at Defray. Uh, um, I am Gilles. So Defray is a French uh, website for insurance comparison, uh, and uh, we are the uh, leader on the French market. Yeah. Um, so to give you a bit of a context, uh, we are comparing insurance products on different uh, uh, product uh, levels. So car, health, loan, uh, bike, uh, etc. Uh, we are operating on a, on a single code base, uh, 500, more than 500,000 uh, uh, lines of code. Uh, we are more or less 30 developers. Uh, we try to make like continuous delivery at least one release a day. And to give you an idea, we, have, we give like uh, three million codes a year to our to our users. Um, so how does the site work? Uh, when a user comes to our site, we uh, show them a more or less long web form, in which they uh, fill in their information uh, about themselves and their usage of their their the thing that they want to ensure. And then uh, we show them this page in which they can compare their, their insurances. And if they click and buy their insurances, uh, we get money. And we send them the, the small uh, toys. Uh, how does it work on the backend side? Uh, so for each, the, uh, for each user profile, uh, we fill in an object uh, uh, model uh, that, that we have on our site. And then that model uh, we send uh, to, uh, we map that model to different uh, web services of insurances. Uh, and we gather the responses for quotations. Uh, so the web services of uh, insurances, they gave quotes. Uh, then we gather all, the, all those quotes and we send them to, uh, to the user. To, uh, we, uh, we show the web page. Um, so it's a simple scatter getter uh, pattern. Uh, of course, uh, insurance is a risk management uh, business, uh, so not every insurer uh, wants to quote, uh, wants to give a, a proposal to every profile. They want to pick and choose. Uh, comp uh, well, uh, if uh, if they want to give a quote, if they want to insure a, a, a certain person. So that's why we want we implement uh, these business rules for them on our side, for to prevent them to to uh, well call their web services uh, more or less. Uh, so these business rules are validation rules. We we validate if uh, a certain profile matches uh, some kind of criteria. And we have lots of those. We have like a hundred insurer on online our website. Uh, on different products, uh, so we have more or less uh, 500 uh, these, of, these, of these rules. I guess it's more than that. So traditionally on the legacy code, uh, it was written on uh, Java, plain old Java classes. Uh, so when an insurer wanted to say, okay, I want, uh, I want to insure only uh, people that are uh, more than 35 of age. Uh, so we go ahead and uh, edit a class, uh, write that uh, write that predicate, write that condition, uh, and we didn't really know if the developer did uh, its job well. Of course, there are co code reviews and so on, so but there there were no governance, there were no auditability of the of, the, of that code. Um, so that uh, has uh, an example of that kind of code. Uh, so you on to, uh, on the entry uh, of arguments, you see. Uh, uh, the uh, of, well, one of the couple of classes that are of our of our model, and uh, for that case, all we want to do, of course, uh, with kind of, kind of null checks, if uh, the uh, the user wants to start its uh, contract uh, after uh, 60 days or not. Uh, so this is like, like contains lots of, lots of boilerplate code. And it's really difficult to, to understand. Uh, a lot uses lots of uh, helpers to, to get it uh, get it done. Uh, so our goal was to reduce that uh, size of code to a minimal uh, size, which is easy to write for developers, of course, because we are developers, but also uh, for our business people to understand uh, what is written. Uh, well, if the if the code written was 
compliant to the specification that the insurers gave us. Uh, and uh, we want to manage that, that catalog of, of rules, uh, the, that is these small functions. Uh, and for us uh, to be able to manage all, all the, the catalog, uh, catalog of, of, of rules. So we end up uh, uh, having uh, uh, writing a, a fluent DSL, uh, let's say the, uh, the, same, the same code that we saw uh, on the previous slide is written when uh, date, co date contract after pl uh, today plus uh, 60 days, uh, then exclude uh, that profile. Uh, so why a fluent uh, API? Uh, back that time, we were uh, started to uh, migrate all our uh, SQL queries on our code base to a framework called uh, Juke. So Juke is a library that can introspect your database and uh, generate some classes uh, and lets, lets you write uh, the, uh, with a fluent DSL SQL called SQL queries uh, using your, your own tables uh, perfectly type-checked. So we were inspired by that, uh, and we wanted to do the same thing uh, for our validation rules. Uh, so we end up uh, having, writing that, uh, that framework and open sourcing it, uh, which is called DOOV, Domain Object Oriented Validation. Uh, so we provide a Fluent DSL, Fluent API, uh, for validating uh, domain models uh, with a type-safe uh, approach. Uh, with a gist, what's the what's how does it work? Uh, so when you write uh, with the DSL uh, your your validation rule, uh, let's say account company equals to letter A and uh, account phone number starts with uh, 32 plus 32, uh, 33. Um, uh, we build uh, lambdas for each of the uh, small uh, parts of the of the DSL. And we bring them back together with, uh, with a building by building an AST. And each part of the lambdas are associated with uh, a, a bit of a metadata. So that at runtime, we can intro introspect all these metadata and do some co cool stuff that we, we will show, show you later. Uh, so let's say for this rule, uh, of course, it's an AND. Uh, it's combined with an AND. So we have a binary predicate. Uh, which, does, which is associated with a lambda, uh, which does the AND uh, operator. And that uh, binary predicate has two leaves, which are, uh, which are leaf metadata that are, are written on top of a certain field of our model. Uh, so of course, there is the accessor for that field, uh, which is a lambda. Uh, there's the function that will, uh, well, it's a predicate, uh, object equals to uh, left ray. And uh, again, another accessor, but that time uh, it's, a, uh, it's a function that, uh, that the return starts with, uh, et cetera. So now we will see another demo. So, um, let's go back to the ID. Um, don't be afraid. <laughs> uh, so, in, just to start here on top of the screen, so we, we, we have that kind of legacy rules uh, uh, we, we already described with the null check. Uh, I will explain the business part. <laughs> so what, we, uh, what is written here is that the user's birth date is uh, today uh, more than uh, 80. Um, the email length is uh, lower than a particular configuration uh, uh, we have in, in, in another field. Uh, the company is Lefure, and the phone number is plus three, uh, start with plus three three. Uh, and we will uh, try to rewrite that uh, uh, here uh, using the Fluent API. I would like to introduce first uh, the um, our our business model. Uh, so the business model, uh, we, we so it's part of the do sample. So it's something you, you, you when you check out the code, you you have that stuff uh, uh, as a sample. 
So we have a user uh, with a, a set of fields. So here you have the initialization of the user. And uh, we have an account uh, also having a much more larger uh, set of fields. We have a, a collection inside, uh, a small configuration object. And everything is aggregated with a, a model holder that have just two pointer, three pointer, one of the user, one on the account, on the last one on the configuration, and we return the model. So it's plain old Java uh, as you could read everywhere. Um, an interesting thing is um, how uh, Doof, so the, the framework, uh, uh, is working on top of the model. So it's annotation based. Uh, but uh, that set of annotations uh, are used to uh, generate a companion class uh, and then after that uh, everything is done and you could start to uh, write the DSL. Uh, so here we, we have uh, decorated all the fields that we would like to expose to the DSL with an annotation. And uh, on, um, you have two um, two attribute uh, two annotation attributes uh, here. One is the, uh, an ID for the field. So every field we would like to expose uh, should be part of an enum that uh, is keying the, all the annotation. On the other side is a readable value. It's a way to uh, expose uh, uh, some labeling for the DSL. Uh, it could be internationalized. Uh, so here I show you the default uh, property file to just have the internationalization. You, you could, uh, it's not mandatory to interna uh, internationalize every uh, key you could simply uh, write a, a plain uh, text here. Let's go back to our sample. So uh, our legacy rule, uh, let's start. Every time you would like to, to, to write, uh, so here the SL sample model is a, f a companion class on the sample model. So it's, it has been previously generated. It's quite fast. It's completely static. No, uh, nothing is dynamic. But at the end, you have a very strong performance because of that. Uh, so you, when you start a, a predicate, you, you have a when method. And then uh, we have multiple end. So I will translate that with do using a, a, the match all um, API. and. The so match rule uh, allow to combine multiple predicates, and the rule is terminating with validate. Okay, so it's uh, the bootstrap. And let's see how to write various predicates. So the first one, so I take a field, is related to a user's birth date. Uh, and I would like to check the age. So I, I have some uh, API to check the age. Here I should uh, uh, provide a local date. So everything is strongly typed uh, uh, following the various uh, fields you are checking. Uh, but in our case, because remember that we are writing a, a Java function, uh, we will use a dat provider, so um, that supplier, I mean, pardon, sorry. So age today, uh, and the last part is uh, checking that uh, the, the age is greater or equal to 18. OK. Uh, now, <coughs> I could uh, use a static import to make the stuff much more readable. And we have the first part of the rule is written. Uh, now, second predicate. Second predicate is related to account email. Uh, so I have the length 
uh, function available. It's a string. And uh, I would like to uh, check that it's um, shorter uh, to the configuration field max email size. On here, I have the second predicate, static import to make it much more readable. Uh, third predicate is related to the account company. So here, uh, we have an enum. Uh, so the type of the uh, parameter is uh, a user-defined uh, enumeration. Uh, and uh, I will check equal, equal to company dot and the final predicate is related to phone number. Uh, and you can you can see all the uh, API available. So equals, but and with all the uh, the API API you are used to uh, uh, to. Um, to, uh, to use uh, for uh, string. Uh, so here it starts with, uh, okay. On that's fine. Uh, a bit more of static import. Or maybe we should try the rule. Uh, so to try the rule, the first thing is to run it, uh, uh, and we have that uh, execute on uh, API, and we provide the instance of the model. Um, maybe now I could just drop the legacy rule. Uh, the, the, uh, the instance of the model is uh, the, the code I previously showed you that set up the model. Uh, Okay, and we should run just in case of fire. So it works. Uh, uh, we would like to check if the result is true or false because it's predicate. So we have it return a result object. Uh, so the result object is a, is a, a part of the framework, but it's just an order for the result. And we could assert that. So we, we provide a, with Doov a, a, an extension of assertG. So we have a assertions, uh, which is a, just a subclass of assertG uh, assertion. We could assert on the result and check it's true. OK. Probably you don't remember the set, setup of the model, but it's com completely normal, the, the result is true. Uh, what we could show you now, it's um, uh, the f maybe the, the fir fir first cool stuff of the demo is that uh, if I would like to read the, the rule, it's really easy, just use this out. And you, you, could, uh, you could read uh, all the IST that has been translated uh, uh, nicely, uh, and you are over the, the full predicate, and you could read the rule. And you could. Uh, so um, you feel uh, that it could be useful. But um, right now, Probably uh, it's it's a bit boring to have a, 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 a big, big one-line uh, text, uh, a long line of text. So we have also a markdown. So let's see how it works on with markdown. On markdown, it's much more readable. So so you have the, the small tree, all the all the predicate uh, exposed. And uh, remember that I told you that we, ha we have some uh, internationalization files, so maybe it's time to, uh, to try in Italian. Um, 
Okay. So uh, thanks to uh, our uh, 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 our friend uh, that made the, to provide the translation, I expect that it's correct. I, I'm not pretty no, sure. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't try to uh, the, uh, to read that. Uh, my accent was, would be so terrible. Um, so so yeah, it's possible. We have done it. <laughs> Let's continue the demo. So uh, we we have all the readability uh, uh, of the, of the rule, which is a, a, a very nice feature. Um, let's take uh, maybe now we will make the rule fail. So uh, to do that, uh, we will take the uh, the model and remember. Uh, oops, I read. Remember the full predicate, so I will break first the phone number. Uh, so uh, I take the uh, account, oops, and uh, set phone number uh, to wrong value. Oops, okay, and the good news is that my assertion about on the result is failing, so I correct. So, okay, it's, perfect. it's completely normal. Uh, and I will take a look. Um, oops, shit. This, uh, up. I will take a look on some information available in the result, which is a failure cause. So, a failure cause. Okay, that's another cool feature of we provide. We provide a, a, a predicate reduction uh, inside Doof, which allows you to uh, just take a look of what has been run uh, during the execution and uh, just extract the predicate that makes uh, the rule failing. Uh, and he told you that that's only that predicate uh, that makes the, the, the rule predicate fail. Okay, let's continue. Uh, maybe we, I will introduce another failure to just to check it detect. Uh, so I will play with the company. Um, so another, another French company, voilà. blah, blah, cards, first one. Um, run it. Uh, and it detects the, the new issue, but uh, it, it seems wrong because uh, you have uh, it broke two predicates, the uh, company predicates and the um, the phone number, which is not detected uh, uh, in the execution. And the reason is uh, that uh, by default uh, we are running on top of the Lambda Java runtime. On, uh, the Lambda Java runtime implements short circuit. We, we don't know who, uh, what is short circuit. Anybody? The, in fact, it's just a way uh, during the execution to optimize when, uh, the first predicate when you have multiple and the first predicate that fails to cut the execution. You don't care about the rest. You know that the output will be false. That's, sorry? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's possible to print out which is the value that causes the failing. You say that the company should be less correct, but which is the value that causes the failing? The value that we passed. In this case, blah, blah, car. Yeah. We can get it on the. You expect that uh, we told you that the value is blah, blah, car? In the, you expect that. Uh, no, no, no. Ah, the wrong value. We have it, but uh, yeah, right now we don't expose that in the failure message. Um, uh, we capture that uh, there, there is a few. In fact, inside the result, we, uh, you, you have the subset of uh, valuation used for that particular rule. So all the fields that are 
playing in the rules are captured during the execution. Kind of an evaluation log of all the benefits that were passed. So, uh, and for the demo, uh, now I, I have added that small piece of code to disable the short circuit. Uh, and uh, because I'm interested to have the, the, uh, the, the whole explanation of the, the reason, and it works fine. It was just a, a side effect of the short circuit. If I uh, run all the predicates, it, it could give you all the answers. Uh, now, now I could uh, complete my, uh, my test. So, um, um, we just capture that, saying okay. Tac. Uh, up. And uh, because it works also uh, with the uh, internationalization, uh, I could add the local here uh, in Italian. Sure. <coughs> Um, so now I have the explanation uh, in Italian, and I could also assert that. Uh, so I will just add the, just capture here. Up, up, up. Uh, I need to uh, add the local in my asserts. Oop. And here we are. I have my uh, unit test about the failure. So any questions uh, about that? And yeah, that's all for the live code. Yeah? So how do you integrate with uh, Javax validation package? No, <laughs> it's uh, the, the next part. Yeah, okay. um, <coughs> so, a, a few a few slides to uh, just uh, complete the, uh, the, the the explanation about uh, uh, predicate on predicate predicate reduction. So, if you have multiple end uh, that are embedded together. Uh, the, uh, the way we rewrite the uh, IST uh, works well and uh, is able to just uh, simplify the IST and uh, tell you the, the root cause of the failure uh, as uh, you don't care about using match all. It works uh, also with uh, multiple case of uh, co uh, predicate combination. Um, uh, uh, a few words about uh, 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 an operator we use and we develop for, uh, for our own purpose. Uh, it's a count operator. Count operator is, is a way to um, implement uh, some threshold, uh, saying, OK, I have multiple predicates, and I would like to check that uh, maximum one, or at least one, uh, is failing uh, to trigger the rule. So uh, if you uh, would like to. Uh, uh, do some like scoring or some threshold in your, in your alerting or stuff like that. So it's designed to that. And also in that case, uh, it, yeah, the um, um, predicate uh, um, the failure uh, cause is compute in that fashion. So he could tell you that uh, uh, the the rule has failed because they, you have to, that two two predicate that uh, uh, has failed. Um, so on that solo, on a, we continue Thanks about... Thanks for the spoiler. <laughs> uh, so, as you were saying, uh, there's already a validation framework, a GSR in Java, uh, called Beam Validation. Uh, the reference implementation, as you know, is Hibernate. Uh, and it's an annotation-based API. You put just uh, annotations on your model, and uh, it should work uh, well. Except that, uh, well, uh, some... Some, in, in some part, the IDE support is not that good. I mean, email uh, for that instance is uh, only applies to a string type, uh, but that one won't uh, fail in your IDE and it will, it will fail on, on compile time. So it, it's not that type safe. Uh, again, uh, it's difficult to do uh, some complex validation uh, by with cross-field uh, validation stuff. 
So you can go ahead and say that uh, string uh, is uh, is matching a regular regular expression of uh, France or UK, but you can't really say that uh, if my country is France, uh, my phone number should start with uh, plus three, uh, 33. Uh, and again, uh, all the natural langu language export stuff that we, pr we can provide, uh, well, you should uh, write your own message, failure message, on top of your, um, your uh, um, annotation. Uh, but again, uh, what we are doing with the DSL and the introspection that we have, we build up this, uh, this maintenance, this back office page uh, that is uh, easily uh, doable uh, for your own use case also. Um, uh, so uh, we have this, uh, this web page for our, for our business people, it's a closed web page, that exports, a, that does a catalog of rules that we implemented for insurers. And so our BAs can go ahead, or uh, account managers can go ahead and say that, okay, uh, what are the rules that are uh, put in place for that insurer, and what we can do to, to offer them the different deals, saying that, okay, maybe you are filtering too much of that profile. We can go ahead and change that. Uh, and uh, the, the cool thing is, uh, well, let's take an example. It's a, a relatively complicated uh, use case. Uh, well, most of it uh, is in French. Uh, but let's say that, okay, uh, uh, the claims that are uh, posed for, uh, uh, for a conductor uh, uh, was the reason that that whole uh, rule was, uh, was triggered. So maybe if we can uh, uh, relieve a uh, couple of these predicates, we can uh, increase the number of codes uh, requests that, that we are sending to, to that insurer. Uh, so the whole, having this whole catalog helps, helps us a lot to drive our business and uh, that of our uh, partners also. So that was one thing. The other thing is uh, the, uh, the performance, of course. Beam validation until now is use, uh, uses uh, reflection, but uh, we are building only lambdas, uh, so we are uh, much more uh, performant than, uh, than simple uh, beam validation rules. Of course, uh, as we were saying, with beam validation, it's really complicated to implement the same stuff that we can do with the DSL. And uh, well, if you see the graph, so this is like uh, multiple iterations uh, of, of uh, a rule that we implemented on plain old Java, in DSL, in Doof DSL, and, and beam validation. And uh, the bare metal, uh, of course, beats us, uh, but we are not that far away, and we are much better than the beam validation, uh, like simple rule. And uh, we can uh, compile natively to Grail VM also because of that, because we don't use any uh, reflection, etc. So we can go much more yeah, faster. Talk about, uh, that money and Doom is working fine on yeah, because it's uh, only compile time uh, code generation. Uh, so to sum it up, uh, uh, beam validation helps you do syntactic validation, but we can do more like con consistency checks. Uh, uh, beam validation rules are written on the model, so we can define only one uh, predicate, like one whole constraint of your model. But we can, uh, as, you, as we said, uh, we can define lots of different sets of, uh, of validation rules uh, on top of the same model. And of course, beam validation uses reflection, and we use code generation, uh, which is uh, faster. Um, so until now, we have only done uh, validation. Like uh, we had a predicate of our model, and we are uh, checking if an instance of a model is correct to, uh, to that or, or not. Uh, so you remember that uh, on our backend, like uh, image, uh, we have these uh, these uh, business rules that are that are filtering our, our profiles. But we have also the mapping rules that uh, that helps us to to transform our model, our uh, data to the format that uh, insurer web services are expecting. So we were uh, thinking that uh, that uh, DSL approach can fit with the mapping, object-to-object -object mapping also. 
so we implemented the same uh, kind of DSL, but for making uh, bin uh, mapping, uh, creating a bin mapping framework. Of course, with the same functionalities of uh, introspecting the DSL and exporting the, the rules also. Let's see how that works. Uh, object to object mapping is one of the use cases, as I was telling. Uh, so you have a source model in, your, in the entry, uh, uh, and you want to create a, a second model, which is a different one. You want to transform the source model to a, to a target model. Um, uh, maybe the target model you will send it to, it, it's, it, it can be a DTO. Um, so you have a filled up model, you have an empty em employee, and basically you want to uh, describe uh, a set of rules, a list of rules uh, that will map one uh, or a couple of fields uh, from the source model uh, to, uh, to the target model. Uh, so one, of course we can use the, the cool thing is we can use all, also the predicates uh, that, uh, that lets us uh, describe the, uh, the validation inside our mapping rules. So uh, we will say that, okay, I want to look at the, uh, the, uh, the accept email property of my entry model, of my source model, which is on the orange. Uh, if it's true, I want to map account email to the employee email. Again, I can use some, uh, some functions to combine fields and put to, to another one. Uh, so let's say, uh, take uh, first name and last name and put it to the full employee name. Uh, combine, uh, combine it with a lambda. Um, again, we can use the same uh, transformation functions that we have on the, uh, on the DSL, uh, saying that I want to calculate the age of uh, the, the user and put it on the employee age. And lastly, we, I can transform types, like uh, the country was an enumeration and I want to do, uh, write a string on my, on my employee country. So all these are declarative rules. I didn't do anything until now. Uh, so now I can use the same rule uh, a couple of times uh, on my instances of, of the objects uh, by running on, on an instance of model, an instance of employee. Um, so, uh, and then, because I have the AST of all this, all this thing, I can go ahead and export it on, uh, with, a, with an HTML or markdown or, or text. So uh, let's say map user birthday age at today to employee age. And of course, the Italian works also. Uh, okay, I will take my chances. <laughs> Map data di nascita eta alla data o dierna eta. Great. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> uh, so another use case, of course, the manipulation of the uh, same object. So let's say I want to write uh, 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 some functions, but uh, easier way with the using a DSL to just be GDPR compliant. Uh, let's say I want to anonymize if, uh, the, 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 the employee if uh, uh, he or she is, uh, uh, is younger than 18, and I want to just pseudonymize the, the email. So I can go ahead and write that, uh, writing some uh, mapping uh, rules and applying the uh, source and the target as the same model. So that works also. To sum it up, I guess we are okay. Um, so uh, in our credit base, we migrated lots of, uh, lots of code to the DSLs and it works great. We have the maintenance pages that helps us our, our business analysts. We open source the project uh, and the same, uh, we are uh, using our open source framework uh, in our code base also. And uh, if we try to make the framework uh, extensible uh, with different data types, with different uh, DSL extensions, etc., uh, we are supporting Maven and Gradle plugins. And uh, well, we improved some failure causes uh, exports. Uh, the mapping framework is, uh, is working well, and we are investing on it to, to do other stuff on our side, as I was telling. Um, uh, recently, we tried to, to write uh, like a template of, of rules that, uh, that can be used in different uh, fields. So it's like a meta rule that lets you uh, describe a rule that as a function and apply to different fields, different uh, fields of your, of your model, or maybe different models. And uh, well, we are working on also uh, on improving the rendering of the HTML that you saw, and we are using it every day. 
So go ahead and check it out if you are interested. Uh, we are maintaining the project because we are using it, basically. Uh, and if, if you drop a message uh, in, on GitHub, probably uh, was yeah. only the best one. Yeah. <laughs> on a, a few guys uh, inside or outside, we have a few contributors. Uh, yeah. So well, this is 262 now. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? No? Uh, yeah, yeah. Still, can you just make sure you repeat the questions to the stream? Okay. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, probably this is something in the initial part of the, the speech. So I don't know if you have already say um, what I'm asking for you. That is, uh, it's possible to um, invoke a callback on validation. Uh, I mean, I can. Uh, uh, as a consumer, for example, do the validation to, to do something when it fails or something when it's okay? Mm -hmm. Or I have uh, to perform if uh, it's okay so, to do something? Or, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the question is if I can uh, apply a, a consumer lambda yeah. uh, if my validation rule is, is validated. So it is certainly possible. You can do it on your own with wrapping the, uh, uh, the, the rule, of course. Uh, on the mapping side, we have only uh, uh, also that. So maybe that that can like uh, has a double use of, of API. We should maybe refine those APIs. But in mapping rules, you can say that okay, uh, let's say if when my uh, that predicate is true, uh, then uh, you should map a, a, a value or take something and apply uh, that to the uh, to the consumer lambda. So mapping stuff uh, accepts lambda lambdas on both ends. So uh, that is really like uh, you can do more or less whatever you want and uh, be type safe also. Um, so uh, I mean invalidation that's do doable. Uh, we don't really I guess we implemented on our side, but never exported on the open source side. But in ma uh, mapping rules, that's uh, certainly possible right now. And yeah. J just to add a few words, remember it's a, it's a, the name of the talk, but it's a lambda builder. So uh, you are very quickly expo you c you could expose uh, the lambda tree if you uh, if you expect to manage the, uh, uh, all the functions uh, externally. Yeah. It's completely possible. Uh, on uh, on the other part, we we are not a, a software vendor, so in fact we we provide uh, um, some way to implement uh, to plug the system in various framework if you want, but we don't try to uh, uh, implement uh, for inst for instance uh, all the the tool chain uh, that you could have in Spring or something like that. Uh, 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 in our side, uh, we are uh, we are not providing compatibility with Spring because it doesn't make sense for us to uh, maintain uh, a bridge with other framework right now. Uh, we are not professional open source, uh, so uh, but it's completely possible to uh, plug. Uh, that stuff uh, for with external framework uh, give you access to the lambda tree. Uh, yeah, it's the object we manipulate uh, basically uh, out plain Java. It's uh, behind the scene. Yeah. You are saying it's not compatible with, with, with Spring or? Uh, we have any absolutely experience? compatible with Spring, but there is no bridge provided. Uh, at the end, you, you have the framework that exposes Lambda. If you would like to plug somewhere yeah. with the Spring framework, you should choose. Depending on the use case you would like to use with the Spring framework at the end. So the question was is if it's uh, compatible with Spring, and the answer is no, not compatible right now, but there's no really, uh, there's no blockage on that. I mean, you can go ahead and use its plain old Java. Uh, the one uh, use case that we are thinking of is, uh, well, uh, in Spring or in other frameworks, you can plug the 
the beam validation validators on top of your uh, uh, your endpoints. And it, it is certainly possible in Doof uh, that we don't really uh, implement it. We are thinking of because uh, it we will have that use case uh, more or less uh, in the coming month. <laughs> so uh, we are thinking of implementing a, a, like a Jersey uh, uh, extension, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can uh, export the, this force into natural language, right? Yeah. So how uh, we, can, can we fit do with uh, natural language uh, validation rules? I mean, if, if I take my business experts, my business experts wants to write rules in natural language, can I fit do with, with those? No, that would be interesting. No, we, we, can, we, we won't do that. I mean, uh, I guess uh, it's much more like well, we are not experts on uh, NLP, so <laughs> uh, I can't really respond uh, to that. Uh, another, um, from our point of view, we are exposed to that. Uh, it's uh, main part of our business to translate uh, business rules to a, a code. Yeah. And uh, our experience is that uh, um, the, the idea is to uh, uh, business expert give requirement to the dev team uh, on what is uh, do providing is the way to business expert to validate that the requirements are correctly implemented in production on knowing every time uh, what is running in production right now with uh, with the monitoring on the metrics you have seen uh, which is just a huge improvement in the value chain uh, Allowing business experts to write rules, uh, we are not convinced it's a, it's a right way to uh, provi provide efficiency uh, uh, in, the, in the whole team. Uh, each time I've seen that kind of approach, uh, all the uh, business expert tooling was used by the developer at the end. It's just my background and experience. But so that's. The do is really pragmatic. Uh, it has been driven by our use case, so we are completely. Uh, we have a, uh, ex a lot of expert uh, insurance expert. We are try to make it very fluent uh, in our uh, uh, business pipeline, uh, but probably uh, it, it's re it's not an experimental tool yeah, we are, we are in production since nearly two years on the predicate predicate part mm -hmm. on the mapping part we are much more younger less bag uh, less experience but uh, we'll continue in that direction and as I was saying everything is expensive uh, extensible so you can go ahead and uh, plug your own types and uh, write your own extensions of the DSL yeah, uh, we're good, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.